My mother had just died, and her body was lying in the bedroom. The family had gathered in the living room, waiting for the undertaker. Some sh sharp words had been spoken, in grief, not in anger, but the atmosphere was heavy. So I decided to tell a dick joke. Now, to fully appreciate how inappropriate this was, you have to know my mom. In 1953, my mother was teaching at a school south of London. Now, this was the year of the coronation. And as I was watching the TV show The Crown on Netflix, I realized that my mother's ideal role model was Queen Elizabeth. Now, she would have probably said Jesus Christ, but I think she was wrong. My mother wanted to do what was right, and for the family to do what was right, and to be examples to others, if not the entire British Empire, at least our neighbors and those who we came in contact with. But my mother was also much like Julia Child. She was five foot eleven, had a great sense of humor, and a certain bon vivant. So a month before my mother passed away, I was visiting for Thanksgiving, and she was in the emergency room, and I went, and we were t talking. I told her about the children and the grandchildren and school. And there was a lull in the conversation, and I did not mean to tell her this story, my story about the, the, the dick, and I did. Now, the punchline was a picture on my phone, so I show her the picture on my phone, and she just bursts out laughing so loud that the nurse comes running in, and my mom says, you have to take this to your father and tell him this story. So I w w went to my parents' house, and Dad was th there all alone, and I, I said, uh, I told Dad the story, and I show him the picture. And there was nothing. He was stone. Now, I should have thought, poor man, 89 years old, and the love of his life, his wife of 55 years is about to d die, and he must be in shock. But I don't think that. I think, uh, t did I tell the story wrong? What, 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 that it's always gotten a laugh. What, what did I do? So here's the story. My mother was, my mother took, 40 years before she passed away, my mother took a correspondence course in ventriloquism, and she bought a ventriloquist figure, never a dummy. Uh, Lenny was a handmaid, very expensive. His eyes moved, and he had real human teeth. C creepy. So, so, so six months before she passed away, Mom gave him t to me. Uh, and I was doing a, a charity gig uh, I was the MC, and there were four bands, and in between each band, as they were cleaning up, I was uh, on and talking. I thought, at the very end, I'm going to bring Lenny out, and I do. Now, I'm not performing. I just bring Lenny out and have him say a few words and let people see his creepy teeth. Well, the crowd goes wild. There's an electric current. Uh, people are running to the front, and they're t taking pictures. Well, I, I, I finished the show, and I'm putting Lenny back in his suitcase, and I said, Lenny, I th think we may ha have a career. So I get off stage, and one of my friends comes to me. He says, Mike, did you mean to do that? And I said, mean to do what? And he sh sh shows me this p picture, and what had happened was... Uh, I was holding Lenny in my hand, and, and this was my first time, and my thumb had come up between the, 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 the Lenny's legs, and I was n n nervously t twitching my thumb. So I had been 
that he had been exposing himself for the whole time. And I was the perfect straight man because I had no idea. And what I thought was electric electricity was actually disgust and, and embarrassment for me by all my f friends. So back to the night of my mother's death, I tell the story to the family and I hold off on the punch sign. I just show the picture and as the picture is making its way, there's a wave of, of laughter and the picture comes to my father and he looks at it and he just begins laughing so hard. And that's the ending that you want.